Okay, here we are with part two. Now the first part has been done. In the second part, we should do something like this. Currently in our app, when we click this, we just get a message clicked. Now what should happen, it should open a new window. So let's create it. I'm gonna call it open chat and I'm gonna create a directory for it also. Okay, our open chat view is just an empty item. We need to create it the same way we created a context view. So it needs to be a component. I'm just gonna add a component that has an item. We are using components because we are using a stack view. So now we need to import the folder and here we can add our component. The beautiful thing about components is that they don't create instances when they're added like this. It will create only an instance when it's used in the stack view. Let's set our open chat view as the initial item. And right now it's empty. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to change the item to a rectangle. For our background, we're going to use a gradient. The orientation is going to be horizontal and we're going to use just two gradient stops. First color is going to be this hexacode and the second one is going to be this one. But I don't want to use the colors like this since we have our custom colors. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add them to our custom colors. First of all, I'm going to import colors. Then I'm going to enter our component library and add a new color. I'm going to call it background dark and the second one is going to be called background light. Now when I save it, I can use it here. The first gradient stop is okay, the second one needs to start from 1.0. And there we go, now we have a nice background. I'm going to add the radius like we did in the previous view. I'm going to use the main window radius, so if we change the main window radius, this is going to be changed also. The first thing I'm going to add here is the chat body. And it's going to be composed of a few components, but first let's just create it. It's going to be a rectangle, and I'm going to give it an ID. The width is going to be the parent's width, and we're going to latch it to the bottom. For that, we're going to use anchors. The height should be around 90% and the radius is going to be 40. As for the color goes, we're going to use our primary color. Now if I apply it, it looks something like this. Now the first thing I would like to add is our chat input. I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call it components. And there I'm going to add chat input. We go back here to the chat body. I'm going to right away add it here. First of all, our folder. And here I'm going to add our chat input. Now when we go inside, first thing I want to do is latch it to the bottom of the parent. In this situation, it's the chat body. And I want to keep it horizontally centered. With that, I'm going to use the anchors for horizontal center. And the most important parts are always the height and width. Height is going to be 55, and width is going to be around 87% of the parent's width. In order to be visible, we need a rectangle. And it looks fine for now. As you can see in our example, we have a radius to it. And the color is also using a gradient. So in order to save time, I'm just going to copy paste it as you already saw the gradient. So it's basically the same as the last gradient. The only difference is we are starting from minus 0, 2, and I'm using our custom colors for dark bubble left and dark bubble right that I added in the meantime. You'll see later why it's called like that. Now this margin here is a little bit too low so we're gonna increase it. Right now we just have a rectangle. What we need is a text field inside of it. So here I'm gonna add a text area. Of course it's not finding it because we need the quick controls. I'm gonna give it an ID and let's give it some anchors. The height is gonna be the full height of the parent and right now we have something like this barely even visible. So we need to change the font a little. First of all let's give it a better color. Okay now it's more visible. Let's increase the size and I'm gonna lower the opacity a little bit because this white color is too strong. And for the font family I need to import our custom fonts. All right, it looks better. But as you can see, it's on the top and it's not looking pretty good. So let's align it vertically. Okay, nice. Just a few little adjustments. I'm gonna clip it just so it doesn't go out of bounds. We're gonna use the wrap mode. Now when we type, it just goes to a new row, thanks to the wrap mode. And one last minor thing is a placeholder. Type for our message here. Now we have a nice placeholder for our messages. But as you already saw in our design, we have also the send button. So let's add that too. For that, we need to import a few minor things. We need to import icons and buttons. We're going to use our custom button. To be precise, we're going to use icon button. The ID will be send button. I'm just going to copy paste height, width and margins so we spare a little bit of time. We have something like this. Now one problem we have now is when we type our message, it goes inside of the circle. That's because our anchors of the message field are to the parents right. We need to change that to our send button. And now it goes nicely where it should be. The color is a bit wrong, so I'm going to use a gradient again. And as you can see, it's pretty similar to the last gradient. The only difference is that we here use a light bubble, not a dark bubble. As for the icon goes i just added a new svg to our icon vault and used it it could be any icon you want you can just replace these values for now we're finished with this component the next thing in our chat body is the chat press so i'm going to create a new component and right away i'm going to add it 
Our chat thread should be anchored to our chat input stuff. The rest is just full width of the parent. Right now you don't see anything because we're using an item. But inside of our chat thread, we're going to use a list view. Let's give it an ID. I'm going to give it the anchors fill and margins by 16. And a few basic properties that we already used in our last video in the list view. So spacing, clip through. There's going to be really a few instances where you don't want to use clip through on a list view. Highlight follows current item through. Now in order for our list view to show something, we need to give it a model. But before we give it a model, we need to create a model. And it's going to be pretty similar like our last list model. We're going to have a model that's called chat history. It's going to decide if we're the sender or not. It's going to show us the message and the time. For now, this is all hard coded and mocked, but later we're going to implement real data. And now we just need to add that model. When I say it, of course, still nothing happens because we haven't decided how we should present our data on the model. For that, we're going to use a delegate. And this delegate will be custom. So we're going to create a new component called chat bubble. Right away, I'm going to include it here. For our chat bubble, we're going to use an item. Inside of that item, we're going to use a rectangle to give it a color. First of all, let's give it a height. Now, the height is not that simple because in this situation, we need to give it a bigger height if we're going to show the time of the message. So before our height, I'm going to add a property and I'm going to call it should show time. And how it will work is going to be a simple calculation. If the chat history is count minus one is the index of this delegate, then we should show the time. If not, we're going to check the next message and see if the sender is the same as the sender of this message. To get the next delegate, we're going to use the get method and we're getting the next index. Now, back to our height. Should show time. If yes, then it's going to be the bubble height plus 25. And if not, then it's the bubble height. Now, what is the bubble? It's the rectangle I mentioned before. As for the width goes, it's going to be just bubble's width. Now, as you can see from the example, we have some messages on the left, some messages on the right, and that's purely depending on who the sender is. And that's what we're going to do. If it's the sender, then we should keep it on the left or the X should be zero. If it should be right, we need to calculate how much to the right is the X. And this calculation would be the open chat width minus the width of our delegate. I'm just going to move that to the bottom. If I save it now, it's still not visible because our item is invisible and our rectangle doesn't have a height and width. So let's add the height and width. The height and width will be based on the text length. For the width, we need to see if the text is too long. And if it is, we're going to add borders so it can go to a new row. And as for the height goes, we're just going to use the implicit width property of the text. So what we're doing here is we're looking at the width and we're using this math minimum function to decide what is less. Is the message longer than the open chat list with actually 80% of the width or is the 80% of the width bigger? We're taking the lesser value so we can add borders to our message and create a new row. As for the height goes, we're just going to use property implicit height from our message. Now the only thing missing is our message text and that would be a basic text component. Its text would be message. And if you're wondering what is message, that is from our model message. We're going to fill the anchors. We're going to give it some margins and we need a rep mode. In order to have a rep mode, we need quick controls. Now I'm going to add some base properties that I already explained to save time. The only thing that I didn't explain is this property and a horizontal alignment. It works the same way as a vertical alignment. It just tells the text where it should lean to. In this situation, we're looking again at the sender. We're the sender then we're aligning it left. If we're not, we're aligning it to the right. And if I save it, now we have some rectangles and we have some issues. Poppins is not defined. Okay, let's import font. Now we're good. What we're missing here, first of all, this rectangle needs a radius. And secondly, it needs a background color. So the background color is again going to be a gradient. The only thing missing here now is the time that we calculated if we should leave space for it or not. And it's working the same way as the message text. The anchors would be anchored to the bubble. We added some basic margins and we're again deciding if we should put it on the right or on the left. Now why this is undefined is because if we're not anchoring it to the right, it will automatically go to the left. So I don't have to use anchors left. The text should show the time and that is for our model. And the rest of the values are just some properties to make it prettier. I save it. Now we show the time. And as for the chat bubble goes, we're done. Now, if I type a message and press send, nothing is happening. We need to implement the send function. For that, we're going back to our chat inputs and we're going to create a function and we're calling it send message. First of all, let's cover an edge case. If the message field is empty, we just have to exit the function. We don't have to do anything. Since we don't have a real sender and recipient, I'm going to make that decision random. Later, we're going to use real data. I'm going to call to log it just so we are aware where if the function is being called. And now I need to calculate the time. We're getting the current time with the function with creating a new date. And this is just adding zeros. So we have zero one instead of just one. So we have a nice format. Now the main thing here is that now we can form our message. And when we form that message, we need to send it. So we're gonna use the chat thread. We're gonna access the chat, but we can from here. But in order to do that, we need to expose the open chat list. We're gonna use an alias for that. 
now that we have our chat, we're going to append a new object to it. And we need to use the same names that we used in our chat first. So sender, message, and time. Sender would be our property is sender. Message would be the contents of our message field. And the time would be the time that we calculated. So now hours plus minutes. Okay, we created our function. Now we just need a way to call that function. And we're going to call it from our icon button. Unclick. We're going to send the message. Now, if we click on an empty field, nothing is happening because we added the return statement. But if we add a message, it says sending message and adds it to our list. The only thing missing is we need to reset this field. So that's just the line of code. This field text is empty. Now when you're sending a message, it's resetting. One thing that's bothering me here is that I can't multi-select these letters. This is just a property, select by mouse. And now we can. It would be nice that we can also send a message when we press enter. In this case, enter is reserved for a new line, but we can map it to a new shortcut and let's make it control enter. I'm gonna add a shortcut here and the sequence, if this component is visible, is gonna be control plus return. What's gonna happen if we press that, we're gonna call send message. Now, when I type something and press control enter, it automatically adds it to the list. This looks very pretty, but what I would like to add is some animations to it. So we're gonna go back to the chat thread and add some transitions to the adding of messages. We need to make a transition. And in that transition, we need to tell it how it should behave. For that, we are going to use a number animation. And you can guess it, it manipulates some numbers. In this case, property will be x. We need to define the behavior. So the starting point would be the half of the open chat list. And the duration should be a second and a half. Now, you can add various easing types. In my case, this was the one I like. You can check in the documentation every type of easing type. Now we have our transition. Now we need to define when this should be applied. And it's pretty simple. List view has a property, add, and there we need to define how it should behave. And that would be our transition. And now when we add messages, it bounces. Now you notice if I add multiple messages, it doesn't scroll to the bottom. For that, we're going to use our highlight follows current item. And what this does is going to follow the current item. What we need to do is change the current item. And for that, we're going to use signal on count change. Basically, this will be triggered whenever the count is changed. If a message has been removed or added in there, we're going to use the open chat list. Current index is the count of the open chat list minus one. That in translation is the last item. Now, if we add multiple messages, it scrolls further. Okay, we've done most of our component. Now the only thing missing is chat header. So we're gonna create the last component. We're gonna call it chat header. And right away, I'm gonna include it here in our open chat view. I think that our chat header in this situation is pretty similar to the last header in the last video. So in order to save time, I'm just gonna copy paste the whole component and explain bit by bit. So we're gonna use an item as the root component so it can be transparent. We anchored it to the top so it stays to the top. And in order to make our life easier in positioning all the elements, we are using a row layout so it can be positioned one by one. The row layout is filling up the whole width and height of the item. And there we have four key components. The first one is the icon button that will navigate us to the back. How it will navigate us? is we're going to use main stack and pop the last item. In order for this to work, we need to have an item pushed. And in our scenario, we don't have any items pushed besides this one. So when I press this, nothing will happen. So let's push an item so I can show you how this works. If we go back to our main window, we need to set the initial item back to your context view. And as I said, when we click this, nothing is happening. When the contact delegate has been clicked, instead of printing click, we need to push the next view. And in our situation, the next view would be the open chat view. So we're going to use it. We're going to say main stack push the next view open chat view now what will happen if you click it will push to next view let's go back to our header so this is what the back button does the next item on the list is the image we're going to use for now a hard-coded image and we're going to use the same principles that we're using in our context list so we have an image next to it we have two separate texts we're going to put them in a column layout and lastly we have an icon button that is going to be options now what you might have noticed through the entirety of this video everything here in the header is hard-coded and that is because i can't stress it enough we are using mock data that is the reason reason if you press macro it will show you macro but if you press mom it will still show you macro in the next video we're going to connect everything to the c++ model to make this functional so expect when you press mom it will show you mom and its messages when you press marco it will show you marco with his messages but for now that would be it thank you for watching and see you in the next one